So as most of us Jaguar fans know, there was a lot of hype going into the 2021 season. It was the start of a new era, new head coach, new GM, and we had a brand new quarterback that we had pretty much had on our radar since, what, 2019 when he won a national championship game. Again, no, it was actually 2018. So for a while, we all knew that Trevor Lawrence was eventually going to be the number one pick, and wouldn't it be cool if the Jaguars were that team? Well, the Jaguars did end up being that team, and he was under center for the Jaguars in 2021, but man, the year did not go as planned. Uh, this head coach that we had in Urban Meyer just did not know what he was doing, and it seemed like every week he had just given up more hope and given up more hope, and at, he was at the point where he was pretty much just collecting a paycheck and being rude to everybody around the building. So, Jower fans all at our hearts said, uh, getting rid of Urban Meyer, and that finally happened. And then shortly after that, I was like, all right, Urban's out of here. Now we got to get Trent Baalke out of here. And Jaguar fans were kind of against Trent Baalke, not necessarily because of his player acquisitions. It was more so because everybody was telling us, like, you know, former players and, like, ex NFL insider expert people, everyone was saying, look, no good coach is going to want to come to Jacksonville with Trent Baalke in the building. So Jaguar fans tried to, you know, once Shad Khan basically said that he was going to keep him around, Jaguar fans were starting to go crazy. They, you know, wanted their voices to be heard. The whole clown movement went on. And Shad Khan held firm and kept Trent Baalke there. And it was not a clean head coaching search. At least from the outside looking in, it was really, really dirty. I mean, you start off and you hire some of the, you know, big hitters, whether it be Doug Peterson or Byron Lethwich. And then they interviewed like Heber Flus and Flat and uh and Hackett. And then like slowly some of these guys started getting hired. And then Jaguar fans were like, okay, it looks like we're getting Byron Lethwich. But that like fell through, seemingly. And then all of a sudden the Jaguars were interviewing like Bill O'Brien and like Rich Basashia. And it was like, what the heck is going on right now? Like, what is going on with the Jaguar coaching search? Like, is Trent Baalke messing it up this much? And then we got the alert that Doug Peterson had been hired as head coach. And it was like, what? Like, that, it kind of came out of nowhere, even though we knew we interviewed him. But it was like, oh, my gosh, like, finally, this head coaching thing is, like, done. So we had kind of realized it's like, okay, you know, maybe the Jaguars accidentally got this one right. Um, he was willing to work with Trent Baalke. That's good. We got a good head coach. And then now that that is being like settled in, now we kind of take a look at the Jaguars roster right now. And I'll be honest with you, man, it's looking like Trent Baalke is doing a pretty good job as the GM. I know it's been like, it's, it hasn't been too long, two drafts and two free agency classes. Um, but it looks like, like when you look at it really free agency and the draft, he really hasn't missed yet. He hasn't had that big miss. Now, we can go ahead and review some of his some of his classes. In 2021 free agency, they took the approach of not necessarily getting the top of the market guys, but getting guys that are would be I would say solid starters. You know, some of the guys that they got in here were Shaquille Griffin, Marvin Jones, Rayshon Jenkins, Roy Robertson Harris, and Jamal Agnew. Those were and there were, there were some other small ones like, you know, we know about the Carlos Hyde and um and Tyler, Sh you know, there were some, there were some smaller guys, but these are the guys that really the Jaguars gave like the most amount of money to, but none of them broke the bank. And ultimately you don't look back on these signings and you say, man, we should not have signed that guy. Now, all of these are probably like Shaquille Griffin. He's probably more of a number two cornerback. You know, Rayshon Jenkins isn't like a superstar at strong safety, but you know, he could probably be a pretty solid player under, um, under this scheme. So, you know, and then even Jamal Agnew, Jamal Agnew way exceeded expectations. And he was out there last year and he was like the Jaguars really best offensive weapon be behind James Robinson. I mean, he was the guy that had the speed on the Jaguars offense. And then you go into the draft and I'll say the draft class looks really, really good. Um, the Jaguars had a lot of draft picks, so there was a lot of room to really mess up. But the Jaguars had a lot of hits. I mean, the obvious one is Trevor Lawrence. Anybody could have picked him. We could have had, you know, Gene Gene Smith in here, and he would have 
brought in Trevor Lawrence. That one was a no-brainer. But then later on, you know, they drafted ETN. I don't know how much of it was Urban Meyer versus Trent Baalke on this one, but if there's any pick that I think Urban Meyer had a lot of influence on, it was probably ETN just because he knew that they needed speed. Um, you also bring in like Tyson Campbell, who was a questionable pick at the time, but he's actually turned out to be a pretty good cornerback. Um, you also brought in Walker Little, who is most likely going to be our right tackle. And, you know, he looks like a really solid player. And also Andre Sisco at the top of the third round. Um, and he's looking really, really good at camp right now. I mean, you have a bunch of guys like this should be your nucleus, this draft class. And a bunch of those guys so far are looking like pretty good hits. Of course, a lot of this is probably premature, but I'm going off of like the data that we have right now and I'm analyzing this. And like right now, it's looking like, you know, those guys are going to really return some investment for the Jaguars. Now, now you kind of observe 2022, like what happened in the offseason after um, all the crap that went on this offseason with, you know, the new coaching search and then, you know, all Jaguar fans kind of wanting Trent Baalke out of office. Um, 2022 free agency was a record breaking free agency. Now, this one is a little... Now, free agency is trickier. It is very tricky because, you know, it, it's not like the draft where it's like, okay, you're slotted these picks, you're gonna, you got to pick somebody. Free agency, you have to really weigh in, like, you know, like this player's status and is he worth paying that much, basically. And sometimes it's best not to do much in free agency. Um, but the Jaguars broke the bank. They gave out the most guaranteed money um, this this free agency period like it was a record-breaking most money given out in free agency ever and some of the guys that the Jaguars got were Brandon Sheriff, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Zay Jones, Fully Fatu Kasi, um, Aluakin, Darius Williams, and Arden Key. So they brought in a lot of guys to make like big impacts and one thing that we knew as Jaguar fans is like look you're we're the Jacksonville Jaguars. We've had terrible success the last 10 years. So you're going to have to overpay for some of these guys. But they did break the mold of like nobody's going to want to come play in Jacksonville. It just it just more so proves things that I've been saying. I'm like, look, if you like money talks, if you give a guy money, they're going to come. You know, I, there might be certain cases like, you know, a really old player, like maybe a Von Miller probably wouldn't come play here if you gave him a lot of money or these guys that are really near the end of their prime. But, you know, you get guys like Christian Kirk, who's like under 25. I guess Brandon Sheriff's a little bit older, but he was a guy at Washington who was holding out to get like his payday for a while. Evan Ingram's on his like a one year prove it deal. Darius Williams wanted to play in Jacksonville because that's where he's from. And, you know, Zay Jones is a guy that's been in the league in a while, but now is kind of looking to make the next step. And he's been looking really, he's been looking really good, Zay Jones. That's someone that a lot of people are excited about because we saw, you know, all these people talking about him in training camp. And then, you know, it's like, okay, everyone's talking. And we see him in the preseason game. It's like, wow, this guy is fast. Wow, this guy is a smooth route runner. Wow, this guy is getting open. You know, so there's a lot of uh, positives to look at with him. So the the free agency class, it looks like everybody's contributing. I mean, Brandon Sheriff was a beast last game, just mowing people over. I don't know. I, I get a good feeling about this draft class or this uh, free agency class. And then you go on to the draft class. Now, it wasn't you didn't have as many picks as last year, um, but you went out there and look, number, number one overall pick was Trayvon Walker and there was a lot of pressure on Balky for this one because, like, he went against the grain. Everybody said Aiden Hutchinson, Evan Neal. But you know what he did? He went out and got his guy. He said, look, this guy has all the tools to be great. You know, he's got the highest ceiling. We just had to develop him. And, you know, so far... It's kind of proven to be true. Look, this guy is a beast back there. I mean, this guy in their two preseason game is is kind of mowing down left tackles. He's doing a lot of stuff, but he just he hasn't really developed the pass rushing moves yet. And like, man, like if he can unlock those pass rushing moves, this man is going to be a monster, just a monster. So that's one that we had to watch development of. But um, shout out to Balky. I mean, we can't. 
and like I said, it, it, I'm going to keep saying this. I know it's early. I understand that. But I'm going off of what we're seeing so far. And Walker is looking really good. Like, I wouldn't go back and change that pick. I know a lot of people were unhappy with it. I know most people would say we're wanting Aiden Hutchinson or Evan Neal. But, man, Walker has been a beast. And I can't wait to see some more action um, really out of him. And then later on, the Jaguars did something they haven't done Man, probably since like Justin Blackman, and that's move up in the first round. You know, Dave Caldwell did a lot of day two maneuvering and, of course, day three stuff, but he always stayed put in the first round of the draft. But the Jaguars come in here, move up from 33 to 27 to draft Devin Lloyd. And, you know, Devin Lloyd, we haven't seen any of anything of him yet, but he was a top-ranked linebacker, and this is one to look out for because, I mean, right now, man, you're seeing George Pickens do some work over for – the Pittsburgh so it's more like I can't be salty about it but I'm kind of sitting here like okay you know I don't know if I would trade Devin Lloyd for him right now but Devin Lloyd's definitely got to prove something but I don't know I I, that that was one of those guys like I haven't felt so good about a draft pick in a long time like when they got Devin Lloyd I even put out on Twitter I'm like look like I bet Devin Lloyd has a better career than like Walker that's how good I was feeling about him but yeah it was a super I think it was a solid pick, but that's one that we'll have to wait and see on. And I think he's supposed to come back pretty soon, that they're kind of nursing a hamstring injury. So that's another one to watch. And then later on, you get Chad or you get Luke Fortner, who's going to be the starting center, and also Chad Muma, who's going to be kind of like a rotational um, linebacker. So Jaguars really with Trent Balky have like, you can't go through this list and say, boom that was a bad pick or boom, that was a bad signing. I mean, maybe if you want to like get critical, like, okay, maybe Shaquille Griffin, you gave him a little bit too much money, but you know, he, you know, there's, it's more so like nitpicking on anything. And I did, you know, in the drafts, I only covered like the first three rounds. Um, but you gotta like, you gotta like what we're building so far. And also the cherry on top is the CJ Henderson trade. Um, the Jaguars, like with CJ Henderson, after he kind of struck out and just, wasn't was just not good I mean he his situation was not good for the Jaguars um they went out and salvaged that you brought in a tight end which was desperately needed during the season last year and then you gained a third round pick Uh, that was a sunk cost and honestly Dave Caldwell pretty much took a dump on the city of Jacksonville his last year as GM I mean you he went out there and in free agency signed Joe Schobert to a bunch of money and we're still eating Joe Schobert's contract like he's over there for like he's playing he just got signed by Denver Broncos like this week not even on the Steelers anymore and it's like we're, we're, we're paying him like 10 million dollars this year I mean what a terrible what a terrible signing and then you look at the draft then CJ Henderson and Caleb on chase on with their first round picks I mean are you kidding me that is that is awful <laughs> Just terrible picks, and even going later, it, you know, LaVisca Chenault in the second round, we'll still see with him, but, you know, we're not feeling super great about that one. I don't know, but uh, Trent Balky has been a good turnaround. You were able to salvage something out of C.J. Henderson. You you pretty much get Dan Arnold and um, Chad Muma from that, so... I don't know. I mean, it's it's feeling good so far with Balky. I know a lot of fans, and a re- big reason why I made this video was that there were a few fa- um, Jags fans on my last video kind of commenting about uh, Trent Balky, and I agree with them. So I felt it was probably good to make a video on it, but you know, we're ramping up into the NFL season. Super exciting. Another preseason game on um, Saturday against the Steelers, so we should see a little bit more of the starters out there and just some more of like, you know, these draft picks and acquisitions. It's, it's really fun to me, like watching guys like Andre Cisco again, because we didn't see much of Andre Cisco last year. ETN was really fun to watch because we haven't seen any of ETN. ETN might as well just be a rookie from watching him because it was like, felt like my first time watching him. And then, you know, even some of the newer acquisitions, Zay Jones popped off the tape. And, of course, number 16, Trevor Lawrence, was awesome. So, yeah, it feels like we're moving in the right direction. You know, a lot of people feel good about Doug Peterson, and I think we're all starting to feel better about Trent Baalke. Let's just hope that, you know, because we see what's going on kind of on the field. We know what's going on when we look at draft picks. But I'm just I'm hoping that 
in that front office and like TIAA bank feel and all and all the people around there. I just hope they're all getting along and everything's positive and it's not a lot of backstabbing like we've kind of seen like really all throughout the Shad Khan era. And you, I mean it's it's a common thing not only for us but just around around the NFL. You know, there's a lot of big egos and there's a lot of just bad work environments. So I'm hoping uh, you know, Jaguars can hold it up so we can Hopefully get some success over here pretty soon because I know I want it. I know a lot of you guys want it too. So with all that said, thank you guys for watching. And by the way, I am doing a fantasy football league for members of the channel. So be on the lookout soon for a post in regards to that. So with all that said, I really appreciate everybody for watching. Drop a like on your way out. Go Jets. Okay, Jacksonville Jaguars. Too much for your crew to handle. Keep it lit. And this is the number one YouTube channel by UCF Jaguar. Yeah, we about to blast off. If you've been a fan, then this is the dopest platform. Yeah, never hold back. Gotta represent for the tail and black.